so everyone well slept, I presume. <laughs> My name is Arna Sev Arnardóttir. I am the director of the Reykjavik University Sleep Institute and I am also an assistant professor at the Department of uh, Engineering and Computer Science, even though I don't know anything about either. <laughs> I'm a biologist by training and my, uh, my life's work is sleep, so I can't say I'm a computer scientist or an engineer. Mm. Um, so this is um, a self-applied sleep study. So instead of doing the uh, setup that you have to go to the hospital for, you can then put this on yourself. And then you have electrodes here on your forehead. And we are currently validating this against the normal setup, where we actually have also um, sensors on the top of the head and the back of the head. But this measures then your brain waves. Uh, we also measure here your eye movements, because when we are sleeping um, in dream sleep, we have these rapid eye movements. That's why it's called REM sleep. Um, and we also can measure the muscle tone from these electrodes, because that's also important for sleep. Uh, when you are dreaming, you can't move. You're paralyzed, basically. So in Sleep Revolution, we want to simplify the way we perform sleep studies. Today, you need to go to the hospital normally to sleep there for one night, and we want to move it to the home. So you can sleep at home, uh, putting up the sleep study yourself, and you can sleep at home for three nights instead of just one at the hospital. Um, we also need to make uh, the work for the analyzing these sleep studies uh, less demanding. Currently, it is very time consuming and expensive to do these studies, and it also makes the waiting lists for a sleep study very long. Um, finally, um, one of the big aims of this grant is we are working with people with sleep apnea. That is people who stop breathing during the night uh, on a regular basis, and normally they have intermittent snoring as well. And the, this is um, up to 1 billion people worldwide um, have this disease. And we need to have more treatment options than we currently do. We need to realize who actually needs treatment and then what treatment is suitable for that person. So we want to make it more personalized and also more participatory so that people can also uh, monitor their progress when they're doing treatment and they can see if they're doing better, both cognitive wise, um, sleep wise and in other aspects. Uh, sleep is one of the foundations for health. So if you think about nutrition, exercise and sleep, these are the kind of three pillars of health. And if one of these pillars is not working properly, we, um, our, our whole health is compromised, both our mental health and physical health. And I think we all feel it on our own skin when we haven't slept well, um, how it affects our whole day and it colors everything in your life. So you are craving unhealthy foods, sugar and a lot of caffeine, of course. And we also eat too much when we haven't slept well. So um, sleep is for the whole body. It's for the brain, of course. It's very important for our memory, for our cognitive function and our mood. Um, but it's also really important for the body. So this is to measure sleep. Um, this is to measure your breathing. So breathing in and out through the nose. And here we have these belts. One is on the chest and one is on the abdomen. And they measure then your breathing movements. Because when you have sleep apnea, you will have intermittent um, breathing pauses. And we will also see it in your chest and abdomen that you are then trying to breathe. Um, then we measure the oxygen, on, um, the oxygen saturation in your blood on the finger. Um, and we measure your pulse as well. Here we can measure uh, the sounds, so we can hear you snoring. And here we see their snoring. We actually have an audio volume up to 80 decibels. Um, it's actually quite high. Uh, can cause hearing loss for the partner even. So here the person is not breathing. And you can see that the blood um, oxygen level is going down. It's a, a small delay, um, but that's typical. So now the person is falling asleep again, and then he is stopping breathing. And for him to breathe, um, the brain needs to wake him up. So every time um, he starts to breathe again, he is having a disruption of his sleep. So now he's not breathing? Now he's not breathing for 24 seconds. So you can try it at home before you go to sleep. Um, breathe three times, don't breathe for 30 seconds. Breathe three times and stop again and see how long you would last. We can see if a person is sleeping on their back, or on their sides or on their stomach. And we can also see if you're moving. So all of this is in this device, which is then the recorder device. Um, and then we measure um, leg movement. So 
this hasn't been put on yet, but basically you put it here on your, um, on your feet. So we can measure if you are kicking in your sleep, which is another sleep disorder. In addition to this, we have actually two uh, smart watches. Um, one is on this arm and another one is on this arm because we want to see what these smart watches can really do. Um, so we want to see if we can get these uh, watches to do more accurate um, things, which is very exciting. So I think that's all. Thank you.